hello friends welcome to my channel once again and today we are going to learn about the x-ray diffraction okay so what is this x-ray diffraction and why it is necessary and which techniques actually we are using here or which law is uh, governing this x-ray diffraction all these things we have to see in this today's video right so <clears throat> for what purpose first of all we will see for what purpose this x-ray diffraction is used right because we must understand first thing for what purpose we must study the x-ray diffraction so guys in uh, previous few videos we have seen about the crystal structures right so we have seen different crystal structures and i told you yes this is what the periodic arrangement so when we say it is a crystal that means the arrangement of atom is periodic okay but when or who or how we have decided about this arrangement that is what the question arises right so who are who are saying or how can we say exactly this arrangement is exactly periodic that means what we can say here it is what the internal structure of internal structure of that particular crystal so who is <coughs> giving us the internal structure of that particular crystal so that is what one of the technique we call it as x-ray diffraction so this x-ray diffraction x-ray diffraction shortly we call it as xrd so xrd gives us the internal structure of that particular material whether it is a crystalline or amorphous that means what here generally we know that whenever we have some problem in our body like uh, brokage of the bone and yes so then we go to the lab and we take the x-ray generally what we call say we say yes we are taking x-ray and in that x-ray then you can understand whether the bone or which exactly the bone is broken and all so likewise we are taking the x-ray of this particular material and in which we have some atoms arranged and that atoms photograph x-ray graph we can say and that particular photograph of that particular specimen or crystal will is nothing but the internal structure of that crystal and yes who is deciding that this method this technique is known as x-ray diffraction so basically what we got here x-ray diffraction is nothing but it is a technique we can call or in the language of physics more or the, the sophisticated language it is called as one of the characterization technique characterization technique characterization means we have to see the characters characteristics of that particular specimen that particular crystal that means how the atoms are arranged arranged whether they are in periodic or not and if they are periodic then what is the interatomic distance yes yes we know that this is what a what is the interatomic distance and if we have different planes like this so what is interplanar spacing that means yes the distance between any two planes atomic planes so that is what we call the internal structure and from that we can say yes this is a periodic arrangement that's why this material or this crystal or this uh, particular solid is a crystalline in nature if we have irregular arrangement of atoms then we can directly say yes this is not a crystalline structure this is amorphous material likewise so to decide this that means generally to study the internal atomic structure of internal atomic arrangement of the material we are taking the help of this particular x-ray diffraction method okay right now next move towards the next slide <coughs> yes so x-ray diffraction again here <coughs> what i have shown is here we have one particular diagram and it, it is what x-ray diffractometer this is what actually if we go to the lab if we go to any characterization laboratory there you will find such a thing or such a machine that is called x-ray diffractometer okay first of all we have to see this x-ray diffraction phenomena x-ray diffraction is a phenomena but the machine or that particular tool is called as x-ray diffractometer x-ray diffractometer meter okay so that looks like this this is what the x-ray diffractometer and whatever may be the final result is this so whatever this graph you can see it is like our ecg something but it is not that that graph is between 2 theta and the intensity okay what is here on x-axis it is 2 theta and here it is intensity so final product final result from this machine is getting what this one that is what we call the <coughs> Uh, we can say it is x-ray pattern or xrd pattern of that particular material and from that pattern we have some peaks here and there so that peaks will be decided where the atom is present and no uh, and where the atom is absent okay 
or here you can see internally how that particular ma machine is working here we have one x-ray gun okay from that or we can say x-ray tube from that x-ray tube here we have kept our material for which we have to decide or for which we want the xrd pattern or for which we have to study the internal atomic structure okay now this x-ray gun is emitting x-ray and those x-rays are uh, falling on the material which is kept here and yes after that we have one detector who is taking or who is receiving the diffracted or the scattered x-ray beam and from that yes uh, if we have this is what the incident ray and if this is the scattered ray then the angle is 2 theta so that is what this angle 2 theta okay so this is what the basic and here we get the structure like this on this photographic plate likewise okay so that is what the yeah, rough idea about this xrd technique and this is what the material we kept here for which we have to study the xrd pattern or x-ray diffraction pattern and the pattern will be like this so simple here we have a material and that material is exposed by the x-ray and that x-ray will get diffracted scattered and there we have one detector who is taking that scattered beam and yes the intensity of the beam and of the path difference depends on that obviously this is what the angle of the means we can say the diffraction angle because this is incident ray and this is a uh, scattered ray so this is 2 theta is the diffracted angle and so that angle and on the y-axis we have intensity so this pattern actually is called as xrd pattern okay right so this is what rough idea now in between we'll see in detail what exactly the x-ray diffraction means this is what happens in x-ray diffractometer so x-ray diffractometer we have to not see in here but here we will see how the x-rays are getting diffracted and all so next slide is about we will see what is XRD first of all. So, XRD here X-ray diffraction not diffractometer. <coughs> Sorry. So, here X-ray diffraction is a method of X-ray crystallography in which a beam of X-ray strikes a sample that is what I said whether it is a crystalline or we can say if sometimes it is a amorphous solid also we can say and land of piece of film or other detector to produce the scattered beam. So, here detector is there first of all we have a x-ray gun from which a x-ray is striking on a sample means yes for which material we have to determine the xrd pattern and we have one piece then sample piece then x-ray gun and we have one detector. So, that detector is producing the scattered beam because what happens here how the scattering is takes place because when we say the scattering, obviously we have two different types of scattering, elastic and inelastic, yes, inelastic. So, elastic scattering means there is no loss of energy, energy remains constant we can say, energy is constant and here we can say energy is not constant, that means energy before the collision or energy before scattering is not equal to energy after scattering but here energy before is equal to energy after that is why we can say it is constant and here energy before is not equal to energy after ok. So, here <coughs> in elastic scattering what happens there is a loss of energy in our simple language we can say here uh, no loss of energy so here it is no loss uh, but in, in, in elastic scattering there is a loss of energy so energy is losing that means energy is not remaining constant and therefore energy before collision is equal, not equal to energy after scattering collision means scattering so what happens generally when we say the x-ray is striking on the sample so x-ray is striking on the that material internally we have some molecules then we have atoms and within atoms we have electrons so we have a positively charged nucleus and surrounded by some electrons depends upon different materials so let us consider we have few electrons here in this orbit as well as in this orbit. So, this is what actually the structure atomic structure and when we expose this particular atom that material is exposed means that actually atom right and due to that due to that what happens these particular all electrons was are getting extra energy yes already they are there in equilibrium position and due to this x-ray due to this x-ray x-ray means yes obviously it is a electromagnetic radiation yes or no electromagnetic radiation with a very 
very short wavelength very short wavelength so obviously but they are having some energy more energy because wavelength is short means energy is more wavelength is short means energy is more so they are highly energetic beam this is what a highly energetic x rays and if these x rays are exposed <coughs> or allowed to fall on a material then these atoms or within that atom x ray or electrons are getting more energy and this energy is not required for those electrons those electrons are actually equilibrium position and though they do not want that particular energy and therefore what happens this x ray beam as it is coming then it will release uh, those electrons also release energy after a few time because they don't want that extra energy and that is what we can say the x rays are getting scattered from different electrons from the atom so this is what the scattered beam of x ray this is what the incident beam yes and this is scattered beam this is what actually or uh, roughly happens in that particular atom okay and that incident and scattering beam we are observing the there is a detector to observe the scattered beam okay right <coughs> and this now here this beam makes a diffraction pattern because whatever may be the uh, scattering yes obviously we can say uh, diffraction is there uh, because light is or the x ray x rays are getting diffracted from their original path they are diffracted by some another path and the strength and the angle of these beams are recorded as the sample is gradually rotated that means what there is another method the sample is rotated and that we will see that is in a rotating crystal method but here what happens we will see from the angles and the intensities now what i said already we have one uh, graph that is what we got here it is 2 theta and here it is intensity and that graph is nothing but our xrd pattern so that's so that's what we have written here intensity scattered beams a crystallographer that means who is designing that crystals xrd can produce a three dimensional picture of density of electrons within the crystal because after all these x rays are getting scattered from electrons okay so even though we are saying that the atom periodic arrangement of atom is there but actually we are talking about the electron and from those electron positions we can say the mean or the average position of our atom so from this electron density the mean position mean position of atom can be understood a crystal can be determined and as well as their chemical bonds also we can say and their disorder if we have some disorder in the crystal then also we can understood and then other information also like the interatomic spacing and all okay right this is what actually happens theoretically in particular x ray diffraction method okay now <clears throat> what actually the diffraction phenomena is that's what we will see because we are talking about x ray diffraction diffraction but what is diffraction so for diffraction we know that when we say the diffraction it is uh, if we are talking about our intermediate definition it is bending of light yes if you remember that is bending of light from from the sharp edges of from the sharp edges of an obstacle of an obstacle this is what the basic definition of diffraction yes now that's what we are doing here we have a light that is means our x rays x rays are our light basically x ray diffraction in x ray diffraction who is the radiation source x rays are the beam so x ray light is getting diffracted from the sharp edges but sharp edges means what here who is the sharp edges here it is atom because we know that atomic size size of the atom size of the atom and the wavelength of this x ray are nearly comparable they are in angstrom unit so that is what that means near about 10 raise to minus 10 meter so that means what to diffraction for diffraction to occur this condition is necessary the lambda that means wavelength of the incident wave and the size of that particular obstacle must be comparable so and then and then we will have the diffraction that means what the light is falling on us also but there is no diffraction yes is there is a diffraction but the strength or the intensity will not be there because our size and the light which is falling on us it's a light's wavelength size is different so that means what if you want the diffraction the size of the obstacle must be comparable with the wavelength of that particular incident light this is the important condition for diffraction to occur 
and moreover it is uh, that particular obstacle and here we have written two condition one of them is yes, what I said the size of that particular thing must be comparable with the wavelength and that another is yes the series to space obstacle must be capable of scattering of the wave ok so these two things must be there right and yes that happens or that is satisfied these two both these conditions are satisfied with respect to our atom and therefore it is possible to have the diffraction of x-rays from the atom because x-ray is nearly comparable with its uh, or size of the atom is comparable with the wavelength of x-ray and yes x uh, atom are having capacity or capable of scattering the wave so the diffraction is a consequence of specific phase relationship between two or more waves here it is important when we say the diffraction not only a single wave can produce the diffraction obviously we are talking about a beam of x-rays that's why a beam of x-ray is going and here we have a specimen and within that specimen we have some atoms and then those two let us consider first and second wave only if we have these two waves that is what I have written later on. Consider uh, first of all what we have to see here or what we have to understood is that we must have two or more than two waves that have been scattered by the obstacle then and then diffraction is possible. Now consider the wave 1 and 2 have the same wavelength and are in phase. Are in phase means they are starting from a, a same point and at the same instant. So they are in same phase and if those suppose both the waves are scattered in such a way that they traverse different paths. So let us consider they are traveling different path after the scattering ok once they are falling on the material they are traveling different paths and therefore we have some path difference between them ok right <coughs> now if we are talking about their path difference if we are talking about their path difference if these two waves are still in phase after the scattering let us consider those two waves are again still in phase then they will mutually reinforce reinforce means we know that that is what we call the constructive interference constructive interference that means what when we are talking about these two particular waves which are moving and starting from the same point 1 and 2 and they are scattering from this crystal or this particular sample and from that after this also if we are getting those are in phase if those two waves are exactly in phase that means phase difference is 0 or path difference is 0 then we can have yes the constructive interference that means we will have the bright pattern or the bright band or a bright point bright point ok and on the op opposite side if if when the path length difference are scattering if it is half wavelength that means the opposite is that when the path length difference after the scattering is half wavelength lambda by 2 then then the two waves are out of phase and will cancel one another and that is what we call the destructive interference ok. So <coughs> now we are having some path difference because those two waves are traveling but due to the scattering that path difference is not same after the scattering. So path difference if it is integral multiple of or even multiple of lambda by 2 we know this condition if it is even multiple of lambda by 2 then we have bright point and we call it as constructive interference yes or no and if it is odd multiple of lambda by 2 that means 2n plus 1 will give you odd number and if it is lambda by 2 then we have dark point and we call it as destructive interference ok and from this we can get some dark point and some bright point now here I, we can see in the diagram this is what diffraction due to single slit I, I think you have seen this is in intermediate this is a single slit before that we have the number of rays of light and after that that light is coming from this particular small slit and now this slit is having very small size why because we know that the size of the object now that particular slit is behaving as a obstacle that particular slit is behaving as an obstacle and the size of that obstacle that slit and this wavelength of this light is nearly comparable and from that yes we are getting the, the path difference will be there in the all the rays which are coming from this and if path difference is even multiple of lambda by 2 if this is the path difference then what happens we are getting a dark band or a dark point and that green color is a dark or we can say the constructive interference and in between two greens we have one dark that is what destructive interference now same is true for the double slit experiment we have seen this young's double slit experiment and yes we have some dark points or dark bands and then bright band and the pattern will be like this yes if we draw this x uh, 
diffraction pattern finally we will have on a photographic plate this will be the pattern this is dark this is bright then dark then bright then dark bright and so on that means alternatively we will have either dark and bright band same is happening here uh, now each and every atom is an obstacle within the path of that particular particular x-ray beam now yes let us consider this is an interatom uh, it is a plane one plane in which we have these many number of uh, atoms four atoms and let us consider in the below also we have four atoms and they are periodically arranged now this beam is falling this x-ray beam is falling on that and each and every particular x-ray is getting scattered from these atoms and after that we have some path difference between them and if i am talking about these two rays if their path difference is even multiple of lambda by 2 we will have the bright spot now if i am talking about a x-ray pattern it will be like this okay and if i am talking about uh, the uh, destructive interference then i have one in between a gap dark point then bright point then dark then bright and so on so that means what we can construct we can have a uh, x-ray of our crystal so that where is the point or where is atom is present there we will get a bright point and if we have spacing dark spacing that means the atom is not present there it is a wide space okay so this is how we can construct the inter, uh, inter, uh, internal structure of a solid or crystal by using our x-ray diffraction okay this is what about the uh, x uh, diffraction pattern now how to create the x-ray source because we want x-ray and for that x-ray we must have some x-ray source so the x-rays used for the diffraction are electromagnetic waves yes generally or basically our x-rays are nothing but electromagnetic waves but with the very short wavelength and that wavelength is nearly comparable with the atomic spacing between the solids that's already we have seen their wavelength is comparable with the atomic spacing that's why only the diffraction is possible yes or no right this is what we have seen and now to produce the x-rays what we have done generally x-rays for diffraction purpose a voltage of 35 to 50 kilo volt is applied between this particular cathode and anode right applied between a cathode and an anode target metal now this is what a target metal which is anode and this tungsten filament is what our cathode okay so the voltage of about 35 to 50 kilo volt is applied that means high voltage is applied between these two cathode and anode and due to this uh, high voltage this tungsten filament gets heated and due to the thermionic emission what happens the electrons are ejected through that particular tungsten filament and those electrons are bombarded with a high kinetic energy on this material target material material and after that those particular electrons impart energy to the material electrons and now the electrons ejected from these particular metals are nothing but our x-rays so this is how x-ray has to be created this particular thing we can call x-ray tube whatever the diagram is this is what a uh, x-ray tube so because we want x-ray for x-ray diffraction so we must know how the x-ray are creating simply a tungsten filament cathode is there and the material target material whose uh, which is the target material that will be uh, anode and a high voltage or high tension is uh, applied between them and generally this voltage uh, target material is uh, copper or something because what happens the copper is a good thermal conductor and that's why if because of this highly bombarding electron beam this material gets hot very fast and therefore we have here a cooling system to get that particular material cool and we can extract the heat by using this cooling system therefore generally we use copper for that particular target material okay and yes obviously this happens everything is happen in a vacuum that is why it is called as x-ray tube okay right and x-rays are coming out like this and finally how the x-rays are coming that's what i said but here also i have written when the tungsten filament of a cathode is heated electrons are released by the thermionic emission that's what i said and accelerated through the vacuum by the large voltage difference between anode and cathode when the electron strikes the target material material so here I, I said yes we have molybdenum also one of the example to use that as a target material and then yes when the electrons are bombarded or on that or strikes on the target material x-rays are taken off or given off the most common metal used is copper here we are using mostly copper which is which can kept cool easily due to its a high thermal conductivity that's what i said we must keep that material 
cool because I, after every strike of that particular electron, it is getting hot. But the, if this uh, temperature is goes on increasing and increasing, then the property will be something different. So, we want do not want that. So, to extract this heat, we take a cooling system there also and this uh, is very easily possible with a simple material that is copper and therefore, we generally use copper. So, excess rays are generally filtered to a single wavelength because we want a monochromatic wavelength for the experiment that is why we have some filters after this and collimated to a single direction before they allowed to strike on a crystal. So, before using that for extra XRD purpose or X-ray diffraction purpose, we are just uh, having some uh, synthesis with our X-rays. We made, made the all the uh, X-ray beams are having same wavelength that means they are monochromatic and we collimate them. Collimate means we are making them to pass or propagate through one single direction, right? And most of the kinetic energy in this particular case is converted into the heat. So, the target metal must be cooled externally, right? Because when the electrons here from these, we are here we have some or here is a target material which is anode and from this the electrons are coming and these uh, tung from this tungsten filament the electrons are bombarding and the, all the kinetic energy of this uh, bombarding electrons are converted into generally heat and therefore we have to extract that heat every time and that is what exactly happens in our <coughs> x-ray tube okay and finally we will see some applications of x-ray diffraction here applications of what xrd so, what are the applications of XRD? Simply, I initially told you we can have the simple internal structure of our uh, crystal or internal structure of our any solid material. But other than that, we have some uh, applications enable us a quickly analysis or analyze unknown material. If you have any unknown material, then you can take its extra XRD. Then you can understand yes, if it is uh, having a periodic arrangement of atoms and uh, if it is exactly similar to like of our simple cubic, then we can say that is a simple cubic structure. If it is like face centered, then we can say the unit cell of this unknown material is a face centered cubic. From that we can say it is an atomic packing factor, then we can find uh, the coordination number and so on. So, this, uh, this kind of information we can get by this particular X-ray diffraction method and performs a material characterization. So, this is what the, uh, that is what I initially said, it is also known as characterization technique and in such a field of metallurgy means here when we are talking about the metallurgy field there also we are, we are getting very or more or maximum number of unknown materials and for those unknown materials the scientists or those who are working in the field must know which material we are getting from that particular uh, mines so therefore there are for those materials also we use this best technique that is x-ray then mineralogy is similarly forensic science also of a forensic scientist also taking some help of our x-ray diffraction if for uh, the analysis of material then archaeology yes archaeology means if we have uh, some archaeological plant there uh, and uh, we got um, some materials or we got some bones uh, from very ancient days then also we can have some x-ray pattern of that particular material and from that we can extract much more information and obviously in condensed matter physics uh, to determine the structure of uh, crystal we are having this as the best method x-ray diffraction and for biological and the pharmaceutical sciences also because for biology and science uh, pharmacy also we will have some help of our x-ray diffraction because for pharmaceutical purpose we must uh, have some most uh, of the chemical materials which are having which are in solid forms so their uh, their internal structure their arrangement of atoms must be known to those who are working for the pharmaceutical companies and there they also take the help of this x-ray diffraction and similarly for biological sciences also for different types of <coughs> materials they must know their internal structure and there they are taking the help of our x-ray diffraction only so, yes guys, this is all about the X-ray diffraction and its application. So, whatever may be the remaining things, we will see in next video. And if you have any doubt regarding this video, you can post in the comment box. And if you feel really this is a value addition to your knowledge, then please like this video. And for more such videos, please uh, subscribe to my channel, go to the playlist and watch all the videos related to this particular thing. And right, uh, you can say right uh, remaining things we will see in the next lecture or uh, next video we will meet very soon till then you take care and keep learning thank you